Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, MetaZone, and Rovi. And today we're going to be talking about user generated content and the differences <laughs> between Web 2 and Web 3. <coughs> Whoa. Yeah, it's an uh, important I, distinguisher, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't think user generated content is like nothing new. No, it's definitely nothing new. But um, yeah. In the context of the metaverse, in the context of Web 3, it's the biggest deal. Yeah, it's always important, right? <coughs> To identify what is going to be, I guess, killer ap killer applicable in the Web three space, because this is how you're going to identify, you know, next projects, right? Next ecosystems, protocols, whatever, yes, that are going to bring tremendous value to the space, right? So yeah, so you're you're speaking to the <laughs> investors, then, huh? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah this yeah, is course. crypto, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure to share with some of y'all watching this stuff. Uh, we're all you know, itching for the days of the good old days where you literally couldn't miss almost, right? And those are the called bull markets, yeah. you know? Yeah. We're clearly not in that kind of like a market condition state anymore <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> but nonetheless, these are the times when the money is made. Exactly. Like really. Yes. That's a very important like realization. So speaking to you investor types, yeah. you know, in order to get that the positioning right though, you have to understand like the fundamental value adds of you know, the entire space. So this is one. Yes. You know, so we're going to be talking about uh, an article that Sam Purifoy made. And uh, this was shared to me. Um, uh, thank you, Rachel. And we're going to talk through exactly what he breaks down, what the killer app of the Web3 space is going to be. So mm -hmm. um, here he mentions that Roblox. So, so in our conversations, when we're talking about Web3 and like, you know, I, I guess this potential killer app, we always mention Roblox. Now we're starting to talk about TikTok and we're starting to break down as to why these guys are superpowers yeah. in, you know, their ability to galvanize like yeah. large communities to yeah. make stuff on, on essentially on their behalf. Because anytime you make stuff for Roblox or TikTok, if you read their user uh, service agreements, they all own everything. Mm. Roblox owns everything. TikTok owns everything. Hmm. So that's why the Web3 <laughs> distinction is different because... What do you mean by everything? Just, just the content, right? Not, all, not, not, all, not IP. Like if somebody... Well, they own everything, literally. Really? Yeah. Oof. And so <laughs> okay. that's especially so they, TikTok. What about YouTube? YouTube... Um, like do they own the block runner? Like... Uh, I think YouTube... Uh, it depends on like what the service... Okay. Uh, terms of service are, but... Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, essentially... They, they they own the video content oh yeah that that for sure yeah like the <laughs> video itself mm -hmm. but uh but they're they're nothing without their its users right yeah so um so here he's talking about how roblox and tiktok are billion dollar entities that don't actually make anything or rather the, they build platforms and encourage other peoples to make stuff yeah so Which, right up our alley dude <laughs> yeah so this is this is relevant here because in the web3 space with uh, with NFTs, with cryptocurrencies, the content you make, you actually own. Yeah, and um, and so it's it, now we're we're starting to discover people who are starting to see what we've been you know kind of preaching for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted to bring up today and and kind of go through kind of the, the the little items here that he mentions, like turning users into producers and advertisers of their own content means you can drive network effects well in excess yep. of any other marketing model short of an actual marketing uh, <laughs> MLM. MLM. What's that, like the Herbalife? Multi-level multi marketing. Like the Herbalife, like Herbalife type stuff? Yeah. Tupperware, you know, slayers, yeah, makeup. all that stuff. Makeup. Yeah. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. <clears throat> and I always feel, yeah, empowering like the community of users to you know, have the incentive to want to want market themselves because, right. you know, they are th their own product, right? Yes. They, they produce and manufacture the goods that, you know, visitors of these platforms are consuming, right? So that's way more powerful than I think anything like a, a company can do on their own. Right. I mean, companies are very powerful, like on their marketing efforts for sure. But I don't know. It's, I think it expands that potential once you give the people the tools to, and, uh, again, the incentive and I, in any case, I feel like that's that in that scenario, they're always going to outproduce, you know, for sure. What a company can. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, that's part of the reason why we partner with, uh, with our creators too. And we sort of partner in a sense that, uh, we help them do marketing yeah. for, for their content. Yep. 
and um, and so I think it's it's the most sustainable way to allow the community to create stuff, and then you help your community sell that stuff because yeah. it benefits everybody. Yeah. So um, so yeah, he talks about that here in contrast in Web two and Web three, allowing owners to control their content and building monetization models around the level of personal freedom will easily outcompete Web two models that only pay out roughly thirty percent to creators. Mm. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that low in the Web two space, but but yeah, it's roughly thirty percent. Um, and then of course he has he does talk um, about his article here, which I definitely recommend that you guys read. Um, but it's it completely aligned with everything that we've been saying. Yeah. Um, that and I guess so the importance of uh, <coughs> yeah, look at that the importance of ownership and ownership and access. <laughs> yeah, that's been like the 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 word of the month for me. Uh, is it access? I think it is access. Cause yeah, in my analysis of TikTok, <laughs> that's the main yeah. like revelation I came across is, uh, you know, it's not only just building ecosystems or platforms where people can generate content. It's, it's, uh, I guess <clears throat> opening the scope of participation, right. To as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Like it, uh, that's how like real cultural shifts are made. Like if, if all of a sudden people, Everybody has the tools, the ability, something, some way, some connection to, you know, have an influence on the content creation side. Right. I'm speaking mostly on the metaverse here. Yeah. In relation yeah. to this, because obviously TikTok, anybody can make it. That's what TikTok did so well. I think they have features, tools. As long as you have a mobile phone, you download right. the app, you have everything you need to like just generate base level content that people are you know willing to consume and yeah you got the mis you got the music that they offer yeah then you have the editing capabilities right on yeah. the platform and then you have your product which is your video so like literally anybody could do it right right that's the breakthrough i think that everybody is like um the industries need to gravitate towards is that access the accessibility of content creation yeah, yeah, and the creativity, we learned this like pretty quickly once we started MetaZone that the creativity of the community is far surpasses anything that we can create. Yeah. And so enabling those with tools, SDKs, things like that, you're able to see what the see, what people are capable of. And it's interesting, right? When you think about TikTok and then another realization I had, it feels like there, we've been regressing a little bit as far as like quality <laughs> yeah. of the content because yeah. it's video content, right? And then you go through TikTok, what's going viral and stuff. It's like all home video, very shoddy looking, yeah. you know, <clears throat> it's not like a high tier production. Nobody's really yeah. working with, right? That, re that reminds me of like if someone who's a, who's a writer and they, they get exposed to Twitter for the first time or while it was new, it's like, yeah. It feels like real regression. Like all of a sudden, we have like these like long articles it's that's very in depth. But now people are just doing one hundred forty four like characters. Words. It's like yeah. that's all I need. Yeah. yeah. Before people used to like you know sit with their newspaper, right, right. Coffee. Yeah. It was like an event. It was a great time. Just yeah. get, getting that information, you know, and very neatly packaged every week. Whatever. Right. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So well, that's what it looks like whenever you. I guess condense or centralize the content production to just like, you know, That's singular right. entities. You yes. don't open it up to the community, to the people. Yeah. Right? And then once these accessibility tools are provided, I guess yeah, Twitter, yeah, social media, uh, video content, stuff like that. Yeah, the quality is not like up to par. But, but it's still uh there's some elements to it that, you know, are attractive to humanity for some yeah. reason. Well, I think it's a participation thing. It's it's, it's the ability to say, oh, this guy got a million views. Like I yeah. could do that. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. It's a it's a it's a gamified. Yeah, we've gamified the content race of like humanity, right? Which yeah, is cool. It's such a powerful thing. I mean, uh, when people and then are, we've we've given the people the opportunity to be the main benefactors, right? To, right. To exactly. monetize and make money and specifically all that stuff. through Web three. Yeah. Well, even Web two, like you know, your YouTube content creator, you're yeah, gonna make money. True. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, everything's just, you know, coordinated. I think, man, I want to say even on YouTube, like I think ad shares, like I think the creators get like 55% of the, the ad creators. revenue. That sounds pretty decent, right? I, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, but I'm sure people want more, right? Yeah. Like, Dude, we're doing all the work. What the F? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? But of so, course, you so, know. So, yeah, that, that that's the difference between Web 2 and Web 3 is like you can actually... Um, since you own the content, like you, you, you command more, 
right? Mm. From the platform itself. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of elements to this because we're talking about user generated content. And then we're talking about, you know, if you go a little bit deeper, that user generated content in the context of the metaverse, you could begin distributing that content to a community. Yeah. And that, that adds a whole new layer of complexity, Yeah, which we like complexity. We don't like complicated. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now we're going towards, you know, the potential of what we keep saying is the digital nation potential of the metaverse where now creators who own their content can now distribute that content to multiple landowners, multiple people who want to host <coughs> that content. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, he talks about here about the importance of ownership. I mean, it really changes everything for content creators, people who can actually, you know, create, you know, stuff that people want, right. Instead of depending on companies to create that stuff, you, yeah. you have like the entire community. Absolutely. And so he, he makes comments here like UGC will explode faster in Web3 than in Web2. Yeah, I think so too. And we saw elements <laughs> of this too in, in the whole art space, right? In 2020, 2021. Oh, we've seen tons of examples of this. Art, uh, just even in Decentraland sphere, the Decentraland wearables Wearables, thing, dude, yeah. Uh, like there was a period a of time example. in the Decentraland metaverse where the creation of these things called wearables, which are just NFT clothing for your avatars in yeah. that virtual world, it was only creation was exclusive to at first the team right the founding team were the only ones outputting the content yeah and then they opened it up to like you know a small class of creators maybe five to ten yeah and it, it was like yeah. a huge debacle to figure out who those five or ten to be yeah we were one of them yeah we were one of them yeah and you know that initial group of five to ten made some decent stuff yeah it was cool it was okay acceptable but it wasn't until okay now they open the floodgates to anybody can make it you just have to pay a small fee right and Again, access. Yes. <laughs> access is always the biggest like thing. Yeah. Now all of a sudden anybody can participate, you know, anybody could download Blender and figure out how to produce these this content, right? Yeah. Which they do. And there's an incentive to do this because, you know, a new market is created from it. And yeah. <clears throat> all of a sudden there was an explosion, a boom in creativity, things we didn't even know were possible. Yeah. Were coming into the, you know, wearable scene because it was user generated, you know, it was I, it, I think it untaps like a insane resources like humanities has so much potential yeah you know but throughout legacy time it's just been you know I, I don't know we've been shackled it feels like right 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 you know yeah so I mean this is pretty exciting I like to uh you know I, I'm sort of like a uh, big engineer I like to verify my thoughts against what other people are thinking and I mean, I feel like the zeitgeist is changing a little bit in the in the sense that people are starting to see what we've been seeing for a while, mm. and uh, and so I think this will become obvious pretty soon. Yeah, like it it, it only takes one platform, one Web three platform to really take off in this sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see OpenSea and Rarible. Yeah, uh, they've been very successful, but you know, with all the predictions about the metaverse being multi-trillion dollars, I, I don't think we've seen like the actual beginning of UGC in, in the Web3 space. Not yet. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I mean, builders will always act out of their own self best interest and a builder's best self interest is in constructing a platform they actually own. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, everything's falling into alignment here. And um, so I guess part of our task on this show, channel will be to identify some UGC players, right? So, yes. you know, shameless yeah. plug, yeah. We, we, you know, we do have a platform in the metaverse that services the metaverse that, you know, is a, an aggregator of, of, of uh, UGC, <clears throat> UGC. Yeah. yeah. User generated content creators that are continually pumping out new creations for metaverse landowners to consume right so yeah which which is content we're very specific called yeah. metas that are deployable in a single click yeah and uh and so yeah so we've, we've given them the platform creators right and then <clears throat> and because there's there's a scenario within the metaverse where it's the access for creators is almost non-existent right because yeah. you need just four or five grand just to even get started just even have an attempt to create anything for sure. right so and and i, I want to give an example um so when we created this platform you know we we were the first users of this platform because yeah we needed to show what the platform could do mm -hmm. and the only way to do that is to actually create using the platform right yeah. 
So, uh, so anyway, a couple of months later, someone submitted something that like, blew our minds. Yeah. And it was. Yeah. Up until then we were seeing, you know, expect, uh, expected things, right? Yeah. Buildings, buildings, cars. Yeah. Some games, some game, mini games, some yeah. shrubbery and stuff yeah. like that. Things you would expect to see in a virtual world. Right. But then, but then someone submitted a DEX as yeah. an NFT, a deployable decentralized exchange Change. as an NFT. Yeah, so now you were able to swap tokens in the metaverse, which yeah. is, didn't even know that functionality existed. It's obviously the creator of that meta had a deep knowledge of the right. Decentraland SDK yeah. and of the DeFi existing protocols and you know, how to integrate the two together. Yes. Create the perfect 3D asset that, <clears throat> I mean, is going to spawn what I think is a future of metaverse 100%. finance. 100%. Metafy, dude. Metaverse yeah. finance. Metaverse finance. Metafy. She dude, coined it here in real time. <laughs> That's our next video. Yeah. Metaverse finance, dude. So yeah, I mean, as soon as he deployed that, like that really opened up our like minds as to the capabilities and the possibilities of the metaverse. Like yeah. that was our first indication that we could have the entire DeFi ecosystem within the metaverse. Yeah, and that probably wouldn't have never been realized, or maybe way down the line. But again, because <clears throat> MetaZone, our our UGC platform is open to all. We we're giving the access to these creative types to uh, get, expand the potential, just like what happened to the wearables. You know, same right. thing. Yeah, we didn't know the scope of creativity. You know, it's not until you open it up to the world, like you know, true discovery happens. Yeah, you know? I totally agree. Yeah. So so yeah, thank you, Sam. Um, this was a great write up. Uh, we're we're definitely aligned here in terms of how we think about user generated content in the Web three space. Yeah, but and then again. Part of our task is to find more of yes. this. We're not the only ones. Yeah, for sure. There are several emerging UGC metaverse specific yeah. platforms that we've we've known. So yeah, we're gonna make dedicated videos on all of them in the future. So yep. definitely stay with us, dude. If you want to get the uh, remember what I said in the beginning, you gotta place those chips, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now's the time to be doing that. So yeah, definitely follow us along on this. You know journey yeah and uh let us know what you think about ugc and web3 space if you agree or disagree with our analysis and uh definitely comment in the uh comment section below follow us on twitter at the block runner and also at metazone.io and rovi ai and uh, mm -hmm. we will catch you in the next video peace